something I'd been looking at getting for a long time is a hot air station. So I decided on the Atten ST862D. Let's see what comes in the box. Well, it must be easy to use. That is one thin user manual. Four nozzles. Ground strap, power cord, handpiece holder, handpiece, and the main power unit. It's nicely packaged. There are three angled tips, and I'm not real sure if the straight one is a tip or an adapter. I ordered this from the Rossman Repair Group. It's the only one I saw that said it comes with three angled nozzles. At main power on, the version is displayed for a fraction of a second. Apparently this one is version 0.3. Controls are pretty straightforward for basic use. Air volume up, air volume down, temperature up, temperature down. There are three preset buttons. Each one will recall a temperature and an air volume setting. To save a setting to one of the presets, adjust the temperature and air volume to the desired value, and then press and hold the preset button for about two seconds. The button on the handpiece turns it on, and off Holding down the handpiece button for a couple of seconds, we'll switch it between cold air and hot air mode. Putting the handpiece in the holder will also turn it off, which is nice and I think a very important safety feature. I really like the way the nozzles snap on the handpiece. Not sure how well the spring ring will hold up over time with the heat, but it sure is a very nice fit at the start. To enter the settings menu, you hold the 1 and 3 buttons for a couple of seconds. To move through the menu entries, you use the 1 and 3 buttons. To adjust the menu setting, use the air or temp up and down buttons. And to save and exit, you use the number two button.
The first menu entry is the lock function. Off is the default setting. When it is turned on, whatever the current temperature and air volumes are set to cannot be adjusted. Cannot change to a preset either. The temperature and air volume are locked. The second menu entry is temperature display in Celsius or Fahrenheit. Celsius is the default and I will change it to Fahrenheit as that is what I'm used to using. The third menu entry is the factory reset function. When set to own and saved, it just resets the device to the factory default settings. The fourth menu entry is the temperature calibration setting. It has a plus or minus 90 degree Fahrenheit range. The fifth menu entry is the button beep on or off function. It defaults to on and that is a definite turn to off setting. The sixth menu entry is the fixed runtime function. It defaults to off and can be set from 10 seconds to 900 seconds. When this mode is turned on, the heat will run for the amount of time set then automatically shut off. The seventh entry is the standby mode. It defaults to off and can be set from 1 minute to 10 minutes. When the standby mode is enabled, lifting the handpiece from the holder within the set standby time will turn it on automatically. It appears the standby time is counted from any off state, such as placing the handpiece in the holder, using the button on the handpiece, or even time expiring on the fixed runtime mode. This is a very convenient setting to have turned on if using it a lot. Just makes it much easier to use. The eighth menu entry appears to be the start select function. It defaults to NOR. When set to FOR, the heat will start when the handpiece is lifted from the holder. If used a lot at an infrequent rate, I can see this setting being more useful than the standby function. Never even have to touch the button on the handpiece with this turned on. But the handpiece button does still function.
The handpiece holder has a tool mounted to it to assist in the removal of hot nozzles. A nice touch. But the holder is a little on the light side. It can easily tip over sideways. The three angle tips have a nozzle diameter of about 12 millimeters, 8 millimeters, and 6 millimeters. The straight nozzle or adapter has a 21.5 millimeter outside diameter. I really suspect it's an adapter for other nozzles, but I have no idea which ones. There were two main reasons for getting the hot air station. One, I wanted to be able to remove SMD parts from my PC boards without the risk of damaging the traces and pads and maybe the parts can survive removal as well. So here are some SMD removal tests using an old DDR2 memory module. I will start at 400 degrees, which I don't really expect to do much. If it's leaded solder on the module, it might get close to melting it. Over a minute and a half and nothing is moving. Now at 500 degrees, this will probably tell if this is lead free solder or not. Air temperature should be over 100 degrees more than the melting point of leaded solder. Okay, nothing is getting soft. Must be lead free solder on this module or I'm really overestimating the heat transfer. Now at 600 degrees, I expect some parts to come loose. There really is quite a bit of air moving. Even at the 50% air volume settings, I really can't put my fingers anywhere near the PC board at this temperature setting. That was about 45 seconds. Not bad. No damage to the PC board at all. And if the heat didn't kill the IC, the pads on it look good too. Going to go up another 100 degrees to 700 and see how it goes. Wow. Probably less than 20 seconds. That really might be easier on the ICs at a higher temperature, but for less than half the time. I'm sure I'll get a better feel for it after a lot more practice. The other reason for getting the hot air station, the possibility of soldering some SMD parts that would be near impossible to solder with an iron. So many of the newer ICs come only in the no lead version now. I'm sure it will take some practice, but I think I should be able to solder them with the hot air station. Since I don't have any ICs in those packages, nor the PC board to try them on, 
thought I would just try with some leaded SMD parts and see how it goes. I'm going to put a bit of solder on the pads. Then some flux. This is just a 6 pin SOT23 package. Well, 50% air setting is way too much for this tiny part. So I'm setting the air at 10% and the temperature to 650 degrees. That looks pretty good. I'll have to order me some ICs in the no leave packages and some PC boards to try them on. I'm very pleased with the hot air station. I think it's a good price. It works well. The only two things I think it could use are a heavier stand for the handpiece and about six more inches on the hose. And yes, it's very full of very hot air. Thank you for watching.